If you think that the Las Vegas Raiders need to sign or trade for a defensive tackle, I need you to like that video right now. I'll tell you this. If you bleed silver and black, if you've watched a minute of Raiders football over the past two years, I think we can all agree this Raiders team, Raiders teams of the past, need to go out and address the defensive tackle position. So I'm hoping Josh McDaniel and Dave Ziegler watch the show and they add someone to this defensive tackle room because they have arguably the worst DT room in the National Football League. This is out of 160 players overall at defensive tackle ratings. John Jenkins, Adam Butler, Bilal Nichols, Jerry Tillery, Byron Young. Y'all can read. The fact that the Raiders don't have a single DT ranked in the top 110 defensive tackles is worrisome. I'm hoping we get to see a little bit out of Nesta Jade Silvera this upcoming week. But the bottom line is this. We might not agree on every topic that's on this show, but I'm willing to bet that 99% of fans that watch today's show agree with the idea of, yeah, the Raiders, they need to go out and they need to add a defensive tackle. If the Raiders end up signing a DT, if they end up trading for a tackle, we'll be live here on the Raiders Report. And anytime the Raiders news happens, we got you covered here. It's what we do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. Let me show you why we're the number one most watched Raiders show in the entire world. All right, let's go to the free agent defensive tackles that the silver and black should sign. Matt Ionitis. I think. Matt Ionitis, we got it right, and to me, he is the top free agent defensive tackle out there. He started 13 games last season for the Carolina Panthers, and when you look at his PFF grades from last year, a 66.4 overall, a run defense grade of 63.5, and a pass rush grade of 69.1. When you also look at some of the notes that coaches have put out there on him, and honestly, he kind of looks like a beefier version of Roley, He's a great locker room player. Like, this is the type of guy that I really honestly think, yeah, sure, it's week three right now, but you could add him to your locker room, and he's going to be a good locker room fit. He's a leader. He's a veteran. He's not even all that old. I think sometimes people think he's super old. I believe he's right around 30 years old. But to me, I look at this Raiders defensive tackle room, and if you add him, he's the best DT on this roster. Let's go to the next name here on the list, and it's Akeem Hicks. Every single name that I bring up on this show, I believe in some way, some way could help out this Raiders defensive tackle room. The reason why Akeem Hicks ends up making this list is because of his relationship with Champ Kelly. So Hicks, for a while, was playing with the Chicago Bears, where Kelly was previously before joining the Las Vegas Raiders. And even though he is almost 34 years old, he's going to be able to add some depth here to the overall roster. The Raiders need to stop the run, and that's kind of what Hicks does. 61.9 overall grade according to PFF in 2022, 65.7 run defense grade, and yes, he's getting up there in age. But if you're going to sit up here and tell me that John Jenkins, who's also 34 years old, to me, Hicks is a better player than John Jenkins. And at the end of the day, what do the Raiders have to lose? Because the definition of insanity is keep doing the same thing over and over again. If you're going to trot out the defensive tackles that you have on this roster over and over and over again and expect a different result, that's literally insane, which is a lot because I think Raider fans have been dealing with enough insane things recently from a guy who's on the team. Let's go to the next name, and this is going to be the name that I imagine makes you just go, oh, my gosh, and Dominican Sue. We haven't said, we haven't said in Dominican Sue on this show. I don't, I don't know if it's been a year, but it's pretty damn close. Last offseason – Shit, I probably talked about Ndamukong Sue more than any other player alive. Grew up a Raiders fan, kind of has that Raider mentality. He did sign midway through last season with the Philadelphia Eagles. And, I mean, if I'm keeping it a buck with y'all, like, if I'm the Raiders, if it's right now, you sign him. If you're a Super Bowl team, it's after the NFL trade deadline, I'm picking up the phone and I'm going to try to give Ndamukong Sue a call. Is he anywhere close to what he used to be? No, of course not, right? But he is a mean mother effer at 36 years old, and he's going to go out there, and he's not going to be afraid to hit some guys in the mouth. Plus, I would love Sue to be that leader, that the player that, if I'm a Nesta Jade Silvera, like if, if McDaniels and Ziegler keep on saying, well, we want to build, we want to build with some of these young guys, you got to give the young guys somebody to look up to, someone to talk, because I'm sorry. 
the current DTs in our room right now. I'm, if I'm a young defensive tackle, I don't know if I want to talk to them. I would love to talk to Ndamukong Sue. I would love to talk to Akeem Hicks. I would love to talk to the next player up here on this list, which is Linval Joseph. And to me, Joseph is a little bit different compared to some of the other names. And sure, Sue's had more success being able to get after the quarterback in years past. I don't really think that that's his game at this point. Most of these defensive tackles, that's not really their game. But Linval's ability to be able to get after the quarterback has been his strong suit, I'd say, throughout his career. A 59.1 pass rush grade, according to PFF last season. And another player that signed with the Philadelphia Eagles midway through last season. you got to be able to give credit when credit is due because... The Eagles are aggressive, and the Eagles are a franchise that's not afraid to make a splash. They're not afraid to say, hey, we need something. Let's go out and try to get it. He is a better pass rusher than run stopper, but right there are four defensive tackles that I really, truly believe could help out this team. I'm not sitting up here saying that they're going to be impact starters right away. I'm not sitting up here saying that they're going to be the best ET on the team, though I do think Matt Ian wait, Matt Ioannidis would be the Raiders' best DT. All these other players are more of just depth. I just can't deal with the idea of doing the same thing over and over and over and over again at DT and expecting a different result. So here's an easy way to get a little bit of a different result. It's also going to light the fire underneath some of these other DTs where you're like, hey, man, if you don't show up, your job is very easily replaceable. So I just named four players my question to you is this. If you could only sign one, who would you sign? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So if you want, you can type M-I. If you also want Indomitian and Sue, type N-S. Maybe you want Akeem Hicks, A-H. If you want Linval Joseph, I want you to type L-J. Let me know. My answer is going to be coming up right here after this YouTube ad break. I'm going to go with my MI, and I really, really, truly believe that Matt Ioannidis can help out this Raiders defensive tackle room. I don't believe that he's going to cost all that much money. He is the clear favorite to me in terms of the best player overall. I see some people down there throwing up a little bit, but the move makes sense of helping the Raiders. The move that I think is the most likely would probably be Hicks simply because he has that connection with Champ Kelly. Now we still got some more names to be able to bring up here. New sponsor alert, new sponsor alert, new sponsor alert. Hey man, I don't know about y'all, but a huge, huge shout out to today's sponsor, Factor. And if you're ready to eat like LA Crash Dog, I need you to listen up because we got a hell of a deal, 50% off. Use code RaidersChat50 because sometimes when I get done with these shows, I don't want to cook a meal. If I can make something simple and easy and it tastes great, that's what it's all about. So if you're too busy this fall to cook, but want to make sure that you're eating well with factors, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up too, while still getting flavor and natural nutritional quality you need. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back to crushing your goals. This September, get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash RaidersChat50 and use code RaidersChat50 to get 50% off. That's code RaidersChat50 at factormeals.com slash RaidersChat50 to get 50% off. The link's going to be available for you guys down in the comments and down in the description of today's show. I see Chad Smith saying Mitch Rents for head coach. If I was the head coach of the Raiders, I'd make the defensive tackles get some factor meals because maybe then they'd be a little bit more of a factor on Sundays. All right, let's go to the next thing here. Trade options for the silver and black. What I like to do on this show is not only just lay out some free agent options and, you know, I do it so a lot of fans can just see who's available out there and I like to also do that kind of stuff. What we're going to look at now is five defensive tackles that if I was the Raiders, I'd go out and trade for. And I know what's going to be the DT that most people want to trade for. But what I really wanted to do here is give you guys some realistic options. So the first thing I'm coming up here is Milton Williams. And <laughs> when I'm looking at trade candidates, I look at the team. Milton Williams is a high upside type of player. Like, I like what I see in him. You're probably going to have to give up fifth rounder or so. The Philadelphia Eagles also like him a lot. 
His PFF grades this season is a 63.0 overall. That run defense grade, though, of nearly an 80, a pass rush of 55.6. And I would anticipate that some of those numbers would fall because, well, breaking news, Milton Williams, if he comes to the Raiders, isn't going to have Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, or Fletcher Cox. But if I'm Milton Williams and if I'm the Raiders, I look at Milton and I look at his agent and I go, you're the fourth best defensive tackle on the Philadelphia Eagles right now, maybe fifth. You come to the Raiders, you might be our best. And that gives him an opportunity to get out there on the field. It gives him an opportunity to get more snaps because, hate to break it to you, Milton, you're not going to be a player that has an opportunity to get a big-time paycheck on the Philadelphia Eagles. You want an opportunity to get a big-time paycheck? Come to Las Vegas. Come to a team that desperately needs defensive tackle help. And if you turn out to be the best DT on this roster and prove to be a player that can really help out this line, you're going to get yourself a hell of a payday a lot easier than playing for Philadelphia. Let's go to the next name here for defensive tackles to trade for. I'm going to go with Raekwon Davis out of Miami. And Davis is an intriguing option because he's in the final year of his deal. The Miami Dolphins have already committed some money to Z uh, Zach Seiler. They also are going to end up paying Christian Wilkerson, and that's going to leave Raekwon kind of out to dry. I'll admit his numbers have not been all that great over the past few seasons. When you look at his PFF grades this season, again, low, low 50s. But sometimes I do think that a player, if they get a change of scenery, it can help out a lot. He's in the final year of his deal, and if they don't think that they are going to bring him back next season, who knows? Maybe they can end up making a deal just so they end up getting some draft capital. I'm talking about the Dolphins here. But then also relationships, right? Rob Leonard was the Dolphins defensive line coach back in 2020 when Miami drafted him. So you have that connection. Davis also knows Brian Flores. Brian Flores, great relationship with this Raiders current coaching staff. I just think based on relationship alone, Raekwon Davis is a player that I'm sure if the Raiders wanted to make a deal for, it's not going to cost a lot. Could be a name to keep in mind. Let's go to another one here. I wouldn't be able to do this show. And honestly, if I ever do a Raiders trade candidates video and I don't bring up one player at least from the New England Patriots, I probably forgot to even think about putting a player from New England. But, I mean, let, let's just be real here, right? If the Raiders make a trade, the Patriots should always be a team to keep in mind. Also, the fact that they are 0-2, and sometimes teams that are 0-2 are willing to switch it up a little bit. Obviously, great relationship with McDaniels and Ziegler. He is the oldest defensive tackle on the Patriots as it stands right now. So if New England knows, all right, well, maybe the season isn't going in the right direction, they could start to lean on some of their younger players. According to PFF, a 72.5 run defense grade, and that's what I'm kind of looking for right here from Guy. I need a guy that can plug up the middle, giggity, and can be that leader defensively. He has worked with previous regimes that have had McDaniels and Ziegler on it, so they have that coaching relationship. And if you're trying to keep a John Jenkins or if you're trying to keep an Adam Butler – who have some past ties with New England, you could add Lawrence Guy, who's an upgrade over both of those players, and help out this defensive tackle room. I got a few more trade candidates to get to, but hey, man, who wants to party with Jeremy and I this weekend? I'm excited to be able to hang out in the nation. Don't get me wrong. I love doing this show. Chugs and I love hanging out with y'all every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, every basically day at this point. We love hanging out with y'all, but it's really cool to be able to meet people in person. So if you want to hang out with Jeremy and I this weekend in Las Vegas, go to blackoutdivision.com. I'm going to say it again because maybe you were sleeping. Go to blackoutdivision.com and get your tickets for free. All you got to do is RSVP. Where we're going to be fr where we're going to be Saturday night? Drop a can at Blackout. If you're doing something at 11 a.m. on Saturday morning, if you go to the Win Las Vegas at Blue Wire Studios. We're going to be here with Marquette King, interviewing him. And then there's also a pool party as well on Saturday, which is going to be an unbelievable experience. So RSVP to all the events at blackoutdivision.com. You're wearing a Speedo? How much for you to wear a Speedo? Ah. We'll talk about it. Also, use code Raiders Report for $10 off the party bus tickets, which is on Sunday. That won't have Jeremy and I there, but if you want a cool game day experience and party with some other Raiders fans, it's code Raiders Report for $10 off your party bus tickets, and that's more for, yes, Sunday. All right, let's keep it moving here on the show. The next defensive tackle to trade for is Lecky 
Fotu, and hopefully I pronounced that name correctly. And he was a name that I brought up last week as well in terms of some trade candidates that the Raiders could potentially look at. He wasn't active week two due to a shoulder, and it was the first missed game that he had since 2020. I wonder if he missed that game because he was actually injured or because Arizona is just sitting here trying to tank. Like, there's been some weird things that Arizona has done. I, I don't know if they're just making guys sit for no apparent reason. From what I saw, he was a limited participant in practice every single day. And maybe because Arizona is not really trying to push it or trying to keep him healthy to potentially trade, it's a name to keep in mind. But somebody who can help out the run defense game, somebody who's a big body up the middle, arguably their best defensive tackle on that roster. And if they're not going to use him because they want to go full tank mode, right now the Arizona Cardinals to me are a yard sale. I believe I'm always a man that likes a deal. You go to Arizona right now and you see what's available because they're not going to ask for nearly as much as other teams because they're just trying to sell everything before next season. Let's go to the final name here. It's Neville Gallimore for the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't really think Gallimore is a name that they want to move on from. He's actually done a halfway decent job this season. They have good depth. But it's kind of like what I just said here with Philadelphia. I don't really believe Philadelphia wants to move on from Milton Williams. I also don't really think the Dallas Cowboys want to move on from Gallimore. It's just there's a lot of depth there right now. And Gallimore has been thrown out in trade rumors this offseason, but that's because he was struggling a little bit. They drafted Mozzie Smith. Maybe they want to give some more reps to Mozzie Smith. But overall, Gallimore could be a player that helps out this defensive tackle room. And from talking to a past Raiders player who is currently on the Dallas Cowboys, you know, he likes it in Dallas. Gallimore's been getting some reps. He can be a little bit of a knucklehead at times, but... uh. At this, at this point, we need all the help that we can get huh, at defensive tackle. All right, so my question to you is this. Those were five defensive tackles that I believe the Las Vegas Raiders should trade for. Give me a name. If you could trade for a DT right now, who would it be? Who would be the defensive tackle that you trade for? I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. I have an idea of who y'all are going to say. So let me know right now, one name, a defensive tackle that the Raiders should trade for. Now, if you bleed silver and black, huge shout out to all of y'all. If you made it this far in the video, remember, hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications because Jeremy Chuggs and I, we're going to be live Thursday for Thursday Night Football Giants against the Niners. Then we're flying out to Vegas. We're going to be hanging out with the nation Friday night and Saturday. And then also on top of that, what we're going to be doing on Saturday is partying with the nation Sunday we're going to be doing a watch party, so that should be kind of fun. And for those of you that are watching this live, the Raiders just signed linebacker Mikel Walker to the practice squad. But I see down in the comments from Chad Smith, from Mr. Akon, Aaron Donald. Thought about putting Fletcher Cox on here. I talked to a source. He's not available. I don't really think Aaron Donald's available. I get it. He's been linked to trade rumors this offseason. To me, though, the Raiders are not in win-now-enough mode. Like, the only way you're trading for Aaron Donald is if you truly believe that you were a Super Bowl-caliber team. Maybe the Raiders believe that. I don't think they have the cojones to go out and try to trade for Aaron Donald. Maybe I'm wrong in that. He's the best defensive tackle or one of the best defensive tackles in the entire NFL. But, uh... I don't think it's going to happen. I just knew people were going to ask me about it. Here we go one more time. Some free agent defensive tackles that I believe Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler should at least pick up the phone and call. I really believe the top name on this list is the one I would want the most. Akeem Hicks is probably the one that I think is the most likely. And then defensive tackles to trade for. Milton Williams would be the one I'd probably get the most excited over from the upside standpoint. But based on relationships, Raekwon Davis, Lawrence Guy are probably the two most Likely, if you will, Lecky Fotu, though, is another name. Or Lecky? Lecky Fotu is another name, though, to at least keep in mind because Arizona is a full-on yard sale. Appreciate all y'all tuning into the show. Much love. And if you made it this far in the video, can I get an RO for L?